Hey, how are you doing today? Uh, so I just wanted to share a quick tip with you and really what it has to do with is uh, transferring a numeric value derived from the symbolic solver into the numeric solver so that you can carry on your calculations using it. And this is a problem that I struggled with for a long time. I, I tried a number of things. Uh, the example I'll show you, I struggled with it. I'll show you it before uh, we figured it out and then I'll show it to you how we solve the problem. Now I say we, let's, let's face it, I didn't come up with this solution. So a big shout out to uh, Angie at PTC. So I was uh, dealing with her over other business and I asked her if she minded if I sort of snuck in a, a quick uh, to, to, you know, question and she took a few minutes out of her day to, to look at my problem and give me the solution for it. So I really appreciated it. And I figured save her some work from uh, other people pestering her. I'll put the solution out there. I haven't seen it uh, put out there elsewhere. So maybe this will uh, help everybody. So here's the problem uh, laid out on the screen and it's a torsion problem. So this is a problem that I would have given my students in one of my classes uh, and they have to resolve it. So uh, where the issue comes down to here is you get to a point in the problem uh, represented by this equation where you have to sum the torques about a particular point. And so laying the problem out, you see this is without any algebraic manipulation and TA is what we're actually trying to solve for. And it, you know, you can do a whole bunch of manual work and manipulation uh, and come up with an isolated uh, equation for TA, put it into the numeric solver and solve for it. But that's a lot of work. And it doesn't really, you know, if you put it in in that form into the sheet, it doesn't reflect the physical essence of the problem itself. So not great for students, not great for engineers. Uh, so what I wanted to do is use the symbolic solver, that was no issue, uh, to solve for TA. So here's the solution here. Now, trying to get the numeric solver to uh, recognize that value for TA was the problem. And we tried a whole, well, I tried a whole bunch of things. Uh, I was never, never able to solve it. So what I resorted to was basically using a manual intervention. And that's why I've colored it in yellow is to remind me that it's a manual intervention uh, and just copied and pasted the value that the symbolic solver found into a definition for TA so that the numeric solver can use it. Now, obviously, if you change the problem, change any of the parameters of the problem, you're going to have to go and manually do this intervention. So I didn't love it from that perspective. Okay, did the, uh, did the business uh, of the day, but it was not elegant in any way. So let's see what Angie came up with when she uh, guided me on how to, to solve the problem. So here we have the same problem, Oop, scrolling down, and here's where the magic happens right here. Uh, so what she did is she said, okay, let's create a dummy function, right? Solve for TA. And we make it a, you know, a function of all the parameters of the problem, except for TA, which is the only unknown. So not really intuitive, at least I didn't think it was that intuitive to do. Uh, and uh, use the symbolic solver. So you set it equal to the equation that we saw before. Use the symbolic solver. There, there's a bunch of stuff that comes uh, from the symbolic solver, not really uh, interested in it. Uh, and then set it equal to, or set the uh, TA equal to it in the numeric solver, gets the number and it carries on. And for some reason, this works, whereas the other attempts that I made didn't work. Not exactly sure why, just the way the architecture of the program works but it's gonna be really useful to me in the future where I want to use something similar, but don't wanna have any manual interventions to make the solution work. So again, a, a, a dummy uh, function, if you will, solve for TA, all of the parameters less than one unknown, uh, solve for that unknown, uh, set it equal to, or use a numeric solver to set your original variable to that, and your way to the races. So it works and I'm happy. So thought I would share it with you. Hopefully you find that useful and we'll talk to you soon when we come up with another tip.